Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of July 5th, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, we begin the week on a high note thanks to a supremely fortunate lunar eclipse set to take place. Now, I like to think of this eclipse as speaking to a deepening understanding for each of us in at least one area of life as to where it is that freedom comes through responsibility and not from responsibility. This lunar eclipse is happening in the sign of Capricorn, the last of a series of eclipses that has been taking place since 2018 in the sign of Capricorn and its opposite sign, the sign of Cancer. And now as the nodes have moved on, the eclipses will be taking place in whole other areas of the sky moving forward from here. And it will not be until we fast forward to 2028. That will be the next time that we are going to see eclipses in the sign of Capricorn once again. And so this is a rare moment for the fact that we have been experiencing eclipses here, but also what is to come. Now, what I find especially interesting about this eclipse is that it is going to be speaking in supreme harmony with Uranus in a type of conversation that astrologers call a trine. And it is this very energy of freedom and also of very quick and fortunate turnarounds that become possible now. Uranus is a very interesting energy. It is uh, the principle of change. It is the ancient god of thunder itself. And if you think about what happens during thunder, well, it is as if all is dark and then there's light and then there's sound and then there is genuine nourishment that follows. That's what the rain is, nourishing the earth. In fact, with all its drama, all its glory, all its fear, all its beauty, ultimately the symbol of change and truth that Uranus represents is needed so that the rain and the nourishment can follow. And so now here we are with this powerful lunar eclipse and a lot of us are going to experience very quick turnarounds. Uranus is about the new and the next. It is a planet that speaks to the future and it evokes the future. It invites us not only to envision it, but it accelerates our pathway towards it. And then we have a lunar eclipse, which tends to denote closures and endings and things coming to fruition. The fact that this is the dominant energy, this Uranian connection, well, to me, it says that this may be a time when many of us are experiencing a sense of insight, a sense of truth about ourselves, about others, a sense of closures that also bring with them bright new beginnings. We are being asked to be more deeply honest with ourselves as to where it is that we are holding ourselves back, where it is that we need to bring a lens of clarity. And in finding that truth, we accelerate our pathway forward. But it is the closure that brings the ending with a important lunar event like this. Think about what happens during a lunar eclipse. Essentially, there's the moon and then the moon disappears and then it appears again. And it is the moon that is a powerful symbol of emotion and emotional truth. It isn't necessarily about rationality. It is about what we feel. It is about our inner wisdom. It is about our intuition. Now, collectively, I think this is a very interesting time. Of course, we are living in incredibly fascinating times. 2020 may be a very important year. It is a once in a lifetime kind of year. However, it is just the beginning. Next year, all that is coming forward now, we as a collective are gonna be figuring out how to apply it, how to integrate it, how to make what right now is a revelation into something practical and real for more people. That is part of what the upcoming Uranus-Saturn square that's gonna define much of 2021 is set to be about. And so when we look at this lunar eclipse in this larger context, we as a collective have spent the last, well, better part of the last two years 
looking at what home is for us with eclipses in the sign of cancer, looking at what power and authority is going to mean for us. And now we come to this lunar eclipse that is saying your answers are going to be uniquely your own. And at the end of the day, success matters very little if you are not at peace with yourself and if you don't get to really be yourself. Uranus invites us to be in our truth, to be authentically ourselves, and that what other people think really doesn't matter. What matters is the honest expression, the authentic sense of living our truth is all that really matters. And I think that that is part of why Uranus is seen as symbolic of equality and human rights. It was the discovery of Uranus in the late 1700s that accelerated our collective understanding of equality. And that journey continues to this day. And so we have this lunar eclipse. It is an exciting event. It is inviting us to own our individual power to examine whom it is that we have given our power over to and to more fully own whatever it is that is going to allow us to be authentically and individually ourselves so that we can be at peace with whom it is that we are and to build something stable and strong going forward from there. And it is actually by living our truth that we end up finding ourselves in a flow, if you will. This is a very fortunate alignment. This trine, as astrologers call it, of Uranus to this lunar eclipse means that change can come quickly and it can be seen as a blessing very quickly as well. It is fortunate change that is on offer now. And with Uranus trines, there's also a sense of leaping into the future of really big opportunities of being able to share in a really big way, in a way that we had not before. And it is from that place of personal honesty, certainly, but also that place of accelerated blessings that we can actually facilitate sweeping, and I would even say karmic changes that can step in now. And it is ultimately this energy that can help us each to improve our lives and to feel like we are more fully aligning with our unique definition of success that much more. But it isn't just about this lunar eclipse, even though that is a really big moment. It is bringing the extended eclipse season to a close. We've been in eclipse season for about a month now. And that is an unusually long time to be in a period between eclipses. Normally eclipses come back to back, two weeks apart, and that's it. This time we had three eclipses back to back to back. We began on a lunar eclipse and we are ending this eclipse season on a lunar eclipse as well, which tells me that a part of what is facilitating such profound change now collectively and personally is rooted in emotional truth and emotional understanding. We are getting insights and accepting the deeper truth of what we really feel, what's working for us and what isn't. With energy like this, I think there are going to be some positive and sweeping change, certainly for the collective. I do think that we are going to see some symbol of structural change that helps more people feel that we are aligning with a greater sense of equality and human rights for more people than before. All of that can transpire as we move into this week. Now, as we navigate towards the middle of the week, we are going to have a notable celestial connection taking place, and that is between Mercury and Mars. Mercury is retrograde, but at the very end of the week will go direct. And Mars, newly in the sign of Aries, is now starting to get comfortable here and is reaching out to Mercury in a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. Now, of course, Mars is in Aries for an unusually long time, will be in the sign right into the new year of 2021. Normally, Mars spends about seven weeks per sign every two years. This time, 
we are moving right forward. <laughs> and the second part of this year is going to be, in many ways, defined by the upcoming Mars retrograde season. Now, we're not there yet, but I do think that this week is powerful because of this alignment, certainly, but also because of what we are building towards very soon. On the one hand, we are going to have that Mercury direct at the very end of this week. And it will be next week that Mercury starts to gain traction. Clarity starts to set in. Mercury and Mars speaking in this way, that in and of itself says that words can evoke powerful reactions, in some cases that we hadn't expected. It is also news that gets out that has people feeling things very strongly. It is as if people's buttons could get pushed and people feel provoked in some way. But I see this connection as raising questions more than anything. Answers may not necessarily be so clear. It is gonna be once we navigate into next week with Mercury newly direct and gaining traction that more will start to be revealed, more will start to become more clear. At the same time, as we move towards the end of this week, Mars is going to start easing towards Chiron. Now that connection is going to perfect next week. You know, I'm gonna be here to talk about it as we go along every step of the way. But I wanted to mention it now because I do think that as we navigate later and later in the week, sensitivities, emotions are going to feel heightened it is as if more of us are becoming aware of our own wounding and where it is that we may feel that there is a wound that will not heal. But also the invitation here is to uncover and to discover how it is that we can heal that wound. It is this week that does invite us to tap into our power with Mars, but to use that power intelligently it invites us to stand again in our truth, to own our power and along with that, our power of surrender, our power of understanding where we don't have power, to claim the power we do have, but to turn over to surrender and find peace in the fact that there are some things that we are powerless over. And it is in that space of acknowledgement of where we have power and where we don't, and in being empowered as a result, that we're able to be that much more at peace. And that eventually, we're also able to move towards authentic healing. Where is it that it has been difficult to own your power? Where is it that it has been difficult to speak and to be in your truth? Where is it that it feels if you are gonna be yourself, authentically yourself, you're like an open wound? And everyone's going to see and everyone's going to know. Where is it that you feel that to express yourself aggressively is bad? It is going to be this guy that is setting us up to be wise in our expression. And as part of that, we may have to be a little bit unwise as part of navigating forward. You know, none of us here on this earth is perfect. If we were, we would have no reason to be on the earth. All of us are learning our spiritual lessons. And one of the spiritual lessons is understanding how to use our power, how it is that we are going to own it and express it and share it. And we each find our own way for our own reasons and for a variety of motivations. Some of that absolutely you can glimpse in the chart as you learn astrology more deeply. But it is going to be a week like this where chances are we are going to be seeing a whole lot of people learning about their personal power, learning to own the power that they have, the influence that they have, the power of their words, the power of their authority, and how it is that they can channel it in healthy ways. And where it is that they haven't, all of that wounding is going to come to the surface, that vulnerability is going to come to the surface. That is true for the collective, but certainly it is true for each of us in our own individual lives. Each of us have at least one area of life where we have Chiron. All of us in our chart have an area of life where it feels 
that there is a vulnerability or a sensitivity or a wound that says, no, I got to go there. I have to work harder. I have to do more. Where is it that you've done all that you could do and now you just have to have faith? That line can be hard to understand, but thankfully, as we navigate later and later in the week, we are going to feel an increase of awareness. Again, this is a week of questions in the middle of the week, certainly. As we begin the week, there's truth, there's light, there's ease, there's a sense of knowing, owning our power, and that is a beautiful feeling. I think a lot of people are gonna be feeling kinda high with that lunar eclipse energy. Trine Uranus. But as we navigate towards the middle of the week, that is when it is likely going to be the case that energies start to feel more complex. And that complexity is going to grow as we navigate later and later in the week. It will be Mercury ultimately that will help us to facilitate a shift in our understanding and will help to bring clarity at the very end of the week and beyond. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's so much here, but what I love is that this is a week that is inviting us to consider what it means to be empowered. And our answers are going to be uniquely our own. This is a week that's going to invite more and more of us to consider what needs to authentically heal within. And you know, a lot of times, where it comes to power, where it comes to authority, what that means for you, your answers may actually surprise you. What you actually need to heal, your answers may actually surprise you as well. And it isn't always what you think, especially with that eclipse inviting us to consider authority, whom it is that we have surrendered our authority to, where it is that we can claim and own greater responsibility as a pathway towards greater freedom and as a pathway towards greater self, greater authenticity. Like Uranus, planet of surprise, planet of shock, those answers will very likely be unexpected, but when they come, they will be uniquely your own and uniquely for each of us because each of us holds our own truth about what it means to be ourselves authentically in the world. And a sky like this is inviting us to fully own all that we are, to let it shine, to let it celebrate, to find our truth in our emotional experience. And in shining a light, ultimately, we will be led on a pathway towards genuine healing and healing of wounds that perhaps have been there for lifetimes. It is now that the karmic shift and the karmic pathway opens in an accelerated way to help us to align with healing and putting lifetimes of work behind us so that we truly can move into a much more lighter and a much more peaceful future ahead. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below and like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up, hit the bell, all of that. It does mean so much. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I do have books available anywhere books are sold. You can find them online. Both The Body and the Cosmos and Prayers to the Sky uh, were number one new releases in New Age Astrology when they first launched. Thank you so much for your love and support of what it is that I have to share. The Body and the Cosmos is me taking the ideas of Plato and Timaeus and applying it to a zodiacal sky and applying it to each part of our spiritual and physical body. It's got lots of meditations in there as well. And prayers to the sky is like astrological magic light. It's got lots of myth and insight in how to build a personal relationship with the planets. I hope you absolutely love them. The universe is wise and loving. That is coming out in August, August 22nd. 
I will have information about pre-order soon, so be on the lookout for that. And again, I hope you absolutely love it. That is gonna be about the nodes in astrology. And Synchronicity University is underway. It was today, Saturday, July the 4th, that we had the day off because it, of course, is July 4th, a holiday for American friends and fans. So we're gonna be back next week, right around the corner with Neptune. We're gonna be talking all about Neptune through the signs and houses next week. And then the week after, we'll be looking at Neptune in aspect to planets and chart points. So there's a whole lot still to learn as part of summer school. And if you wanna learn more about Synchronicity University, you can visit the website, synchronicityuniversity.com or click on the description, the link in the description below. And finally, I have a wonderful partnership with Cosmogram. Uh, you can go online, put your birth data in, and within hours, you will get a PDF copy of your chart along with my interpretation of your unique birth chart. Uh, this was truly such a labor of love. It was like taking my heart and taking everything I love about the planets and putting it on paper and looking at all the possible planetary combinations, putting it all together, and now putting it out into the world. And uh, these reports have been really popular and so many people have given such wonderful feedback. I'm so, so grateful that so many of you have been enjoying my partnership with Cosmogram and these custom natal chart reports. So whether you wanna get one for a friend, whether it is that you would like to get one for yourself, links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for celebrating the sky and celebrating astrology with me, especially at such a special time like an eclipse. An eclipse is a really big deal, but it's also really special. And I do feel like we are living in remarkable times, times where we are understanding our own power differently, collective power differently, and who holds the power differently as well. My hope is that wherever you are in your life right now, you find power in love, power in wisdom. And I know each of us understands and describes and feels what it means to be powerful differently than other people. But I hope that we may take this opportunity to understand how it is that love and wisdom and truly allowing yourself to be in a space of self-love and self-ownership is one of the most powerful things you can do to feel powerful. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week, enjoy.